Aha. All righty. Well, welcome everybody. Hopefully this is working all right. Uh, audio sound good. I remembered to unmute myself like the first time ever. Uh, let's see here. Come on, chat. We've got about 30 people right now. Hi, right, sweet. All right, I was a little worried. I was trying different things last night with my audio, and I was kind of freaking out a little bit because sometimes you, you do any minor thing with OBS and you mess it up. It's not it doesn't make you very happy. So perfect. All right, so today is going to be a doozy. Um, it's how do you teach a game that's very complicated? <laughs> uh, that's a good question because we're going to try it today. <laughs> Uh, I did set up a green screen, so this should be kind of cool. Let's tell me uh, how this looks. Uh, actually, that's not going to work, is it? All right. Apparently, I'm very bad at this. There we go. I have a little better in my other scene, but I do have some teaching aid stuff, so this should be helpful. So, got about 40 people right now, so that's good. So. Welcome. Um, I guess the big thing I need to first talk about, which I forgot about last time, is uh, the campaign's running. So if you, have, if, you don't know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to GameFound and look for Robinson Crusoe, and it'll blow your mind. There's so much stuff on here. It's, it's uh, quite impressive. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Watch and Play video was, yeah, 45 minutes, something like that. Yeah, well, there's a reason. <laughs> it, it'll be easier... To teach people it's usually I usually teaching people on the fly that's what I'm gonna kind of try to do I'm not gonna bring up everything until it comes it's important enough to talk about I'll talk about the components briefly at the beginning so you have an idea of what is available and just kind of go and we'll do some rounds maybe I'll cheat here and there to give you some situations that you'll run into that are common in your first play and we'll answer uh, if there are any questions, I'll try to answer them. Maybe Ignacio will show up. I, I don't know his schedule. Um, I imagine he's very tired answering comments and stuff like that. So give him a little break if he needs one. So let's pop on over to uh, the table here. Ah, all right, there we go. Green screen's a little better there. Yeah, all right, cool. Not perfect. The basic like green bed sheet, if you don't know what I'm talking about. And you just... Put a card on there. Um, so, what exactly is Robinson Crusoe? We'll just start there. It's a cooperative game where you're working together and it's worker placement. Um, and basically, in the, in the at least the first scenario, you're trying to survive the island and try to build up a um, uh, a fire, a thing of a uh, thing of wood to make a fire so a passing ship can see you, right? And you only have so much time to do that before the ship basically sails away, and then you're just kind of doomed. Um, so this is actually is on Tabletopia. Uh, I figured I would change it up. I'm more used to Tabletopia. Um, so anyway, so this way it shows people you can play it on Tabletopia, you can play it on Tabletop Simulator. There's no like full-fledged app yet, but man, I would love to have an app like my phone or my iPad. But a companion app is a good start, and if you don't know a companion app right now is, it's going to provide you more event cards um, and add some really cool. Basically, it's going to give you infinite replayability, which is it already has near infinite replayability right now. So, all right. Well, um, let's see here. what else to talk about. So I was thinking about this last night. I wrote, wrote down notes for a couple hours trying to think of, of things to talk about, but I know I'm not going to remember them, even if I write them down. So. I'm just going to teach you how to play the game like I would teach you at a convention. Um, I did the same thing with First Martians. I would just sat, sat you down and we'll just go. You'll know some stuff. Then I'll ask you, hey, what do you, what, what would you do in this situation? Would you go exploring? Would you get wood? Would you get food? So we'll go from there. So let's start off looking at the board here. All right. And if I do this on two, three. That probably looks pretty good there. All right, sweet. <laughs> I like this question. Who else is here to check how wrong they played for years? 
That is so very true, because even I, I actually found something in the rulebook yesterday I didn't even know I was doing wrong. I don't know if it was, I made the mistake, but it was minor. Don't worry about that. But um, I remember I played Ghost Stories for years, and I, I played it wrong. Um, <laughs> and then I found out, and it was like, oh, well, no wonder we're playing at such a hard difficulty setting, because we were cheating. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. So this is a snare castaway. So you see my cursor here. We have twelve rounds uh, to build the fire. This, this is the objective here. So all, all these scenario sheets are a little different. They're they're not the same format. Like the kind of are, but not exactly. It makes a more thematic feel. But here, basically, your objective is to build wood piles. So you have to start small because you have to build it up right, and then over time, get that even more wood. And then you have, to build, you have to build fire at some point. Once you have that built and you have all of the wood placed here, I think that's 9, 12, 16 wood. 15, 16, 15. All right, math, math's hard. <clears throat> oh, hey, Kurt, welcome, man. Um, if your scenario kicked our butt last uh, Wednesday, um, so we're going to try it again at some point. Um, that's for Truven Gamer, if you, don't, if you don't know. He's in chat, so welcome. All right, so you have 12 rounds. To get this wood pile built and the fire uh, invented. If you do that, you win the game immediately. Some scenarios, it, it'll tell you on the sheet, hey, you only, like, usually you win at the end of the night phase. Like, you, you go through all the phases in the last phase of the game, of the round. Uh, and this one specifically tells you, hey, if you do this, you win automatically. So that could mean a life and death situation if you're, like, so close to death that, like, the weather would kill you. <clears throat> um, so... Yeah, anyway, so, of course, this scenario has weather, so uh, once you get to the third round, we're going to start rolling the uh, fourth round, try rolling the weather dice, and then nature hates you. The island really wants to get rid of you, um, so you're having to roll all the dice. So that could be really bad and kind of bad. There's not really a empty result, uh, only on this red die. Um... So a question here is something something bothered me for months. Is it more useful for me to watch YouTube or on Twitch? What helps your numbers better? I actually have no idea. I mean, YouTube has kind of been the, the portal channel, and the Twitch was kind of like a offshoot that Ignacy wanted to do some live streaming, but he didn't really have the time. So he said, hey, I have these volunteers or veterans. Why don't you go for it and see what happens? And it's been kind of nice because now like we, we help out in a lot of the like portal con and other events so the portal team in poland can go sleep <laughs> and we can take over and they don't have to worry about us for the most part um yeah do both there you go i like that option give us double the numbers it probably doesn't matter a whole lot um we're not really going to try to make money on twitch right it's all about the fans and you know we want to sell you the games and stuff uh i don't know if i've introduced myself my name is ben by the way that's <laughs> I've been volunteer of Ignacia for, it's like 2014, something like that. I feel old, it's seven years ago. Um, wow. Anyways, let's, let's get back to this. I'm going to get distracted trying to follow chat and everything. Um, keep asking questions. Um, if you do capital question and then colon and then whatever your question is, I can probably see it easier. Um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea, is we need to create our wood pile. And we can, we can create it before the, before the ship comes, and we're good. But we still have to survive, um, I believe, until the end of the night phase. So, anyways, we're not, we're, it's, it's on the sheet somewhere, probably. Um, yeah. So, generally, the idea is, okay, hey, we want to build, um, but this wood pile, right, you have to build it in order. So, you can't just build, like... This section you have to do one you can only do one section like i can do this one round but then the second round uh I, I couldn't put five wood on this one and this one i can only do one round but i could do like one wood this this round and the next round put another wood here right so you're building it up so you can kind of plan it out basically like hey we need so much wood so maybe we build the uh, the last part of of the, the wood pile here and then just kind of go back count back how many rounds you need to do that of course, your plan will probably fail because the events and adventures will change that for you. The weather, the weather has a good, the weather can absorb your wood pretty quickly unless you have a roof. So, 
Um, we'll talk about this for now, but basically, so let's go over our board here. Um, so here's your board. Um, we'll get to the characters next. Uh, so you follow the setup on the rule book. It pretty much gives you exactly this. You have the you start on the beach, and here is your location on the map. Technically, you don't have a shelter yet, but if you get this over, you know, there's a little shelter. But if you get the miniatures edition, you'll get this nice big miniature, which is I'm still baffled that that's the thing. It's so awesome. So our goal. In order to complete our goal, we're going to have to take, like, uh, actions to gather resources. So, like, for instance, this tile has some resources. Um, like the, uh, the food here and the wood. The wood, you know, obviously to build our shelter and to build the wood pile. And the potential inventions over here. So here you have, you have some great ideas, but you don't have any of them with you. It's like, hey, I know how to build a shovel. But you need to have the resources to do so. And you might need some prerequisites. Hey, the shovel, you have to be on the, you have to have the beach icon. If you haven't discovered the beach, you can't build this. So like the rope and stuff are like that as well. I'll go over that a little more. Up here, up here, this tracks your resources you have. So all the resources, you're a team, so all the resources shared among you, besides determination tokens, they are your, um, they're your like way to power, like, like almost like mana to power up your abilities, to use your abilities, which are pretty vital to win in the game. I don't know if you could not have those and still win. I could be proven wrong, though. Question Can you split and build on two levels in the same round? Oh, no, you need, you need uh, in order to build that wood pile, you have to. Let's go back. Yeah, you can't just like build some here and then some here. You have to do get to finish up, right? Because you're you're building up like a like a pile, right? So if you didn't have the middle part, like obviously the top part wouldn't make it wouldn't have any ways to go. It wouldn't try building like a like a pyramid, right? That's kind of what you're doing. Or I guess it's the opposite way. You get the idea. Math, math is hard. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is where you keep your resources. So when you get resources, you'll get this. You'll get you'll put resources, and this is called the uh, current resource, resource uh, available resources, and this is the future. Um, we'll explain that a little later, but basically, when you get resources, they go here, and then after the action phase, they, you'll get you can't like uh, generate resources and use them the same phase. This keeps track of um, like your shelter. So, hey, do I have a shelter? Um, and I usually just put a cube, a cube here, or a disc saying, hey, I build a shelter would flip the token or collector's edition you'd put the miniature out or is it even called a miniature if it's that big um it feels like it's i haven't held it yet so i don't maybe it's bigger than i think it is i feel like it's gonna be huge <laughs> um yeah uh, after rain has it has it right here it takes a minimum of uh, five days to build a fire um there's one exception to that i believe um with only special tokens, but yeah, forget about that. And then here we have our roof, so we have roof level zero. If as you build the roof, it goes up, and if you see the dot dot here, you can have up to more than four. I don't think you'll ever do that, um, unless it's like a weird scenario. Usually, like three is more than enough. Uh, the palisade kind of builds like a little wall around your um, settlement, so sometimes animals attack or wet bad weather destroys it, um, and you need to have that available. And this tracks your weapon level. So when you go hunting, or if uh, you run into some something involves you fighting, you have this. You have a weapon level, and uh, let's see here. So that tracks that. So you did that, and so this game. The click go down the the bottom here. This is where all the like you do your action stuff. So you're gonna you have pawns on the board, and you'll spot you'll like, you'll have your pawns on here, but. You do everything in order, so you go left or right. So like, hey, I'm going to do this, this, this. And we'll go through that once I do We're going to do a couple rounds. Oh, the reason why this column is empty? No, I just, it's just how it, how it was generated. So um, basically, yeah, four, empty, four extra slots. There's no positioning 
here that really would make any any change. Um, that'd be that could be an interesting mechanic. Maybe you like can do a tech tree or something if you had a certain scenario. Hey, you can't build this unless you have the things before it. You know, that'd be kind of some ideas. Um, okay, so let's talk about our characters. So I, I decided up as a two player game. I'm playing solo as two players, and when you play two players, you know, obviously you make two characters, and then you get Friday. Friday is kind of a little helper guy. He he doesn't have a lot of negative effects, but he has uh he's just based an extra pawn that gives you a bit. So essentially, I have a I have a worker placing game with five pawns, right? Um, and so everyone has an ability, they have four different abilities. Um, then there's this uh, health track. So some of the health tracks are, I think they have the same number of wounds. It's just the number of these little arrows, and these indicate your morale going down. Like you basically got hurt, and now you're complaining. Oh, I hit my toe on this, and so you're you're Debbie Downer, and, and no one wants to hear that. So the morale goes down, and uh, morale is really important in this game. If you don't keep your morale up, you will die, um, very quickly. You know, so right here, um, we each have like a personal invention. Like we have this idea that. We think it'd be a great idea, but we haven't told, I guess we haven't had it told our people yet, or everybody else. But basically, if you build that, you get a, like a like a bonus. And they're pretty powerful. Um, and these, oh, pistol and hammer and nail. So you generate this um, two random items to start with. So I I kind of cheated and picked ones that would be more interesting. To look at. There's some that are, aren't as useful in certain scenarios. Um, but so here you go. So these base, uh, they're two times, I can use them twice, and then they're gone. And all right. Okay. Well, do you have any, any questions before I, I tend to just basically do, do a first round and just talk through it. Let's see, I'll pull through here real quickly. Yeah, that's right. The, the carpenter would bring uh, hammer and nails. That's right. Yeah, it has a back pocket. You know, it's just a uh, who doesn't have a hammer and nails in their back pocket? <laughs> and of course, the explorer would have a pistol, right? Because you run into some wild beast and use to shoot him. Uh, all right, <clears throat> well, I was gonna go on. So, um, round one. And this is the, you know, the phase track. Uh, I usually take a piece, uh, like some kind of piece of wood or whatever mark it on this track. But hey, the first one is the event phase. Now, the event phase, the first round is skipped. So, but we'll, um, so I'm going to skip that this time around. But basically, I would draw, to quickly talk about it, I would draw a card and I would show the event. And it would come down this threat track. And then this card would move over. So... Um, hi, Komorowski. Hopefully I'm saying that right, not butchering it. <laughs> um, so you skip that because usually you start off with um, a wreckage card. Usually everyone starts with like a, this food one. Show real quick. <clears throat> so this is a worker placement spot. So you see the little guy right here? and the, so I can put a pawn there. I can put two pawns here. I'm not going to do one because there's a slash here. Um, that's a good way of getting, getting some early food. There are other ones you can play with if you want to randomize it more that maybe get used to for supplies. Usually people play with this. Fun fact, when Ignacio was, was um, making the game, he decided not to have this starting card and you just draw off the top, top card from the event deck. Yeah, so he wanted to kill you more, but his team kind of convinced him to get this card. Thank the, the portal crew. <laughs> Increase your win rate by, by, by a good amount. All right, so then we'll go down to the, the morale track. So if you notice here, so if you notice the two here, and there's the two here, and the one here, one here. So everything is labeled properly with, with the phase, so that's where you look. So if the one, uh, the two here, that means I have morale zero. If I had on a one, two, or uh, uh, one and two, I would gain determination tokens for the first player. First player is denoted by this. Oh. Can I not? There we go. Awesome little uh, token. Uh, I I use a seashell in my copy. Um, I, I think it's pretty thematic. Um, maybe we'll we'll see a 
replacement. I don't know. Um, if you have negative determination, I mean, the negative morale, then you're going to lose morale to determination. To and if you don't have any, it's really bad. These are taking wounds. Um, we'll discuss that. So, all right. So, let's use your pretty quick phase, right? The biggest one coming up. So, round three, if you look up here, right? That in any case, uh, you're, so this is the production phase. So, this is where you get into resources. So, our current tile where we're at will generate what's on the tile. So, here we have some wood, and here we have a fish. Um, so you would go ahead and grab, in this case, the banana. You have the banana and the bread. The banana is food that will expire um, at the end of the night phase. So, you want to eat it. The bread, which is a little harder to get, does not expire. It just gets super stale, and you can you can eat it later, right? It's still it's still good. And that goes into the available resource because we're producing them, we get them immediately um, for the following round, for the following phase. So now we're round four, uh, phase four. We keep on saying round. Phase four. So that's 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 the meat and potatoes of of the game, like eighty percent of it. So now I have my pawns. On messing with uh now uh I work with other people I'm playing with and say, hey, what's what do you want to do? There's no like ordering the things, we just decide as a group. Um and I believe excuse me, that the you are if you are in the control of your pawns, so you can't someone can't take your pawn and say, Hey, we're doing this, like no, I have last word. If you're playing with people, you're probably having another problem. <laughs> So, so I have five pawns, so I can do uh, various things, and we'll go through uh, each one. So for instance, I could do this action. I could send uh, a pawn or two here and get some food. If I don't, it's fine. It'll still be here. It'll be pushed further down the track uh, later, but usually you take it the first round because important because if you don't eat you take wounds uh, let's see. questions question question can you use that event card two times so like the first time with one pawn the next round with another pawn because you can choose it ah so no um all all cards are of one use only unless it says it i i don't think i found one yet so you can it's kind of one and done right so usually you want to send two pawns because that's that's pretty good, right? Because otherwise you have to spend actions to gather food, and you only get one every time you gather. This is basically free. Um, question, can you use the shortcut to explore the beach? Beach expansion. Thematically it makes sense, but since Ignacy wants to kill everyone, I'm not sure. Um, can you use a shortcut to explore the beach? As I'm like, well the shortcut would just generate you a resource, right? Um, it's basically, We'll get there, uh, but I would I would I would say no. That doesn't that doesn't really work. Okay, so you can either you know one pawn or two pawns to do this. Um, we could go hunting with two two pawns, so we have to. This requires at least two, or Mac, exactly two. Unfortunately, we haven't found any beasts on the island yet, so we need to explore more to do so. And we'll do that. We'll add cars to this deck at some point. And explore. I could do a build action. So. So I can spend one worker or two workers. And so in the next three actions um, are like that. So I kind of view you have two pawns per player. I kind of view that as like a morning action and like a, like a day action. And so if you're deciding to do an action with just one pawn, it's a little risky because you're not using all your time to do, do, do the action you want. Um, but if you use two pawns, it, it's, kinda, it's a guaranteed action. It's not risky at all. Um, so the build actions you can take are you can do these inventions. Um, and you could build uh, your shelter, the the roof, and palisade uh, weapons. Uh, obviously, you can't build the, the roof and the uh, palisade unless you have a shelter. And let's see what else you can. You can. There's also two inventions on this card. You could do these one of these two if you'd like. And I think there are, there are probably some other things 
that you can do that I'm not rem remembering at the moment, but that's what you're doing for the most part. Um, so that's a bill. So gathering, so if there's another tile here, out here, I could go gather resources on those tiles, but I can't gather resources on, on, the, on the tile I, I have camp on, because I already gathered those earlier. If you kind of woke up first thing in the morning and you went and got the wood and the, wood and the fish, and now like you're kind of doing something else. Um, okay, uh, let's see. And then exploring, so exploring, I would basically, I'm going to put ponds around here and kind of view for the island. And that allows you to get some discovery tokens, um, find some, maybe find some bees, more re more sources, maybe even um, like a like a shelter and like a cave, which could be useful. Um, and there's a couple other actions here that just take one pawn to do them. Um, like for instance, here you could you could range camp and get two determination tokens and increase the morale, right? And that gives you more tokens over time, right? Um, or you can just rest for and get plus one wound. Usually, this is like you're taking this action either like you're basically about to win or you, you're just kind of done. Right? <laughs> Usually, I don't want to take this action. Um, so, all right. I'm going to go play some pawns and then we'll go through the how how that actually works. So, um, I think the carpenter and Friday are going to go on and grab some food. They're going to go swim out and get those crates. And my explorer is gonna be you know, an explorer. And we're gonna go explore out there. And so I have one pond left. It'd be nice to build a shelter, but I only have one wood, and it takes two wood in a two player game, or one pelt to build a shelter. I can't do that yet. Um, but I could say build the shovel. I could, or maybe, let's do uh, ranging camp so you can kind of see how that works. Um, yeah, exploration can give you all kinds of stuff. There, the bag uh, of tokens is all kinds of goodies in there. Um, so, let's see here. Alright, so basically I placed all my pawns, and I conferred with myself and my other self. Yeah, that, that looks good. Decisions are final. So now we resolve them. So remember, like I said, you resolve... Do I have this down? Nope. Okay. You can see that. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I take the pawns off. It says, hey, you're gonna get two food. One's bananas and coconuts and one is bread. So I go ahead and I will put them in the future resource box. So I don't have these technically yet, right? Because I'm still resolving all the actions for the for the phase. So somehow I have an, event, uh, an adventure that says, hey, you." Discard food. Well, I don't have these yet, so I could just discard this and not these. Or if you have this, if you have three food, then something happens. I, I don't because I only have one. Um, so, okay, so I did that. And I'm not, not building. I'm not doing any gathering. So I go to exploring. Pro tip, usually exploring is a really, really good idea to do early on, at least one or two spots. At least I've always found I think it's pretty fun. So I just guess I'm going to do this one. Um, the order doesn't really matter as long as I pick one. So notice I said I, I have one pawn, and the action requires one or two. Number two, if I did two, I would completely succeed in doing it. One, well, I have to kind of roll some dice. And these dice, you'll learn to learn to hate them or love them, depending. On <laughs> uh, so all right, I basically. Oh, pull them over here, and oh. roll them. All right. So I'll explain the dice here real quick. So there's three, three, three sets of dice, one for each uh, action type. So building, gathering, and exploring. In each die, there's a die for adventures, there's a die for getting hurt, and a die for succeeding. They have different um, size for the dice. So like exploring is. Um, uh, I think I forget the exact number, um, but yeah. But gathering is generally safer. The actions to do while exploring, I think, is gives you a lot more adventures, and I and I believe building can cause you wounds half the time. So there are 
those are the dice. Okay, so now I can resolve them one at a time. Let's go ahead and do the fun part. We'll do the all right, the adventure. So these are adventures. So question mark, question mark, adventure. Draw one and flip it over. So let's see what we got here. Shrine. Down in the valley, you spot a shrine in the woods. That sounds nice. Maybe it's a shrine that's going to kill me. Um, hey, decide. Discard this card or draw one mystery card. And only resolve treasures. Uh, and shuffle this card into the event. Deck. So, so I have a decision. I can... I can um, and because if I'm the one exploring, I make that final decision on that. So if everyone disagrees, like, well, no, I'm, I'm getting the treasure. Um, everyone I know would say, we're getting the treasure because it's awesome. So I can show how the mystery deck works. Oh. And also, if I do that, I shove this into the event deck. Put that over. So this is the event deck. It's 12 cards right now. Um, and so I'll just put it in here. Pull that up a couple times. So notice that card is in the event deck, so that may come out, and some negative thing will happen. Negative thing, sometimes a positive thing could happen, but it may, I may never show up. I might win the game before then. Um, so now I'll get a treasure from that uh, that card. So I'm going to draw. So this is the uh, uh, mystery deck. So obviously this is a beast. It's going to probably be bad, hurt me. Um, this is treasure. So I really want. And then there is the traps. When you draw from this deck, it'll, it generally will tell you, hey, draw three, draw two, and I'll resolve treasures, or like two treasures and a trap. Um, and do I actually have a card for this? There we go. Where was that? Yeah, I, can, I can do this. I can do this. Very good example. So notice it's a green card on a green screen, so it's not going to look um, totally right. Say, so for instance, the example of this card. So the one I had, I just drew was a hey, you draw, draw, draw till you get a treasure card base. This one will say, hey, discard this card and then draw three mystery cards, and only resolve a trap and two treasures. Um, so if I, so I, I can, I, I can draw. Um, for instance, I could just draw a card and, and stop. Right, um, but I can I can't resolve beat the beast right. So I can draw a trap and say you know what, I want to stop. You, you wouldn't want to do that. Let's say you draw you draw a treasure and then you want to draw another. You need to draw again you get another treasure. You can choose to stop and not and not draw do get the trap right. You don't have to hurt yourself. Um, or say you got a treasure and you're like you know what it's not worth the other treasure. I don't want a nasty tra trap to happen to me. You could just stop. So that's kind of how those work. The green screen actually worked. All right, so I'm just gonna draw until I get a treasure here. So, snake, it's a beast, and I want to resolve treasure. So, just draw inside there. Look at that. We found oh, cave with furs. The walls are covered with furs of bears and wolves. You take the first your camp. Pretty awesome. So I, I remember this happened during the action phase. Um, so I take the two pelts, and they go in the future resource. This is really important. I'll stress this the entire stream because it, this is a big part of the game. Um, and I didn't draw the tra draw the gold chat. The gold is is uh, if you have not you don't know what the gold card is. Uh, I kind of don't want to talk about it because it's 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 great. <laughs> um, Right, so that card just gets discarded. The snake card I drew, it's a beast, right? Basically, if I didn't resolve the card, it goes back in the deck. And oh, you didn't see that gold card there. Uh, I'm going to shuffle. <laughs> All right. That was pretty good. Remember, now I'm still, I'm still taking this exploration action. Now I'm resolving this. This is the success, success side. Um, and so I basically just take one of these, and I was exploring here, right? So I'll put the tile there. My worker back. All right, now this is a good time to talk about the tiles. Question, so was that card at a max of three cards? So if you get three beast cards, then you can just 
Uh, no whim. So basically, that card. Over real, real quick here. When it says to draw cards, um, you only resolve. Um, uh, if it's a beast. The beast you just don't. You just don't. You don't even look at them. You just put them aside and put them back in the deck. You shuffle them back in once you're done. You just do what they tell you to resolve. There's actually a good example of this in the rule book too. So this is just another example I thought would be cool to pull out. I'm a green screen now. <laughs> Uh, 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 wow, uh, I guess gold was the first treasure I ever got. Yeah, you should, you should tweak Nazi that. He would love to see that. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this tile here. All right, look at that. All right, so <clears throat> remember this. This is the train type. Let's go over that real quick. So there are hills, mountains, um, rivers, plains, and then there's the beach. There's only one beach, and there's two of every type. Might be a third one. I think it's a mountain, maybe. Let's go ahead and we found, was it the hills, right? Hills. So first thing you should go over here and you should take these tokens and mark, hey, I can now build the brick. It's a prerequisite that I resolved. I can now um, build the bricks. I somehow have to, if the tile somehow gets flipped over and I don't I don't have a a, a hill available, then I take those tokens off because I don't I technically have the ability to make this. If the hill goes away later and I have it built, it's still built, right? I, I don't like go back in time and um, so like see there's rivers and mountains. I can I can build the pot over here. Show, all right. And I do have one on it also in the scenario sheet too, right? Here, patch it for the mountain. So, don't have to worry about that right now. So the next thing, uh, I usually go is the beast. So, hey, it's a beast car. What's that do? Well, there is this deck of beasts. I draw one and put it in the hunting deck. Beast deck, hunting deck. The hunting deck it has no cards in it, and you just draw a random one and put it on top. Um, and when you add more beasts, you shuffle it up, or I don't think it really matters because you're just adding, you're adding a shuffled card to a new deck that, that's basically empty, so it doesn't really matter. But there's nasty things like snakes and, you know, bears and jaguars, you know, you know, things you normally see on this crazy island. Um, no polar bears yet. If you ever watch Lost and you're... <laughs> Did the train type now these tokens here those are discovery tokens so this is this is one of my favorite parts of the game is drawing these tokens uh usually there's like a bag i think the bag comes in the current edition so just draw two from the bag and that's what you get all right so i got myself uh a nourishing larva y yum um and then found a piece of wood on fallen tree so these are tokens, just give me resources. So I go ahead and I'll put them in here. And these just get discarded, so I'll over here. Uh, and then of course, there is this tiki. What's the tiki do? Well, in, in this scenario, nothing. And the, every sheet will have a tiki and they'll have a book icon. You'll see these in events, and you'll see that eventually here and the tiki. So some scenarios are, hey, if you draw a tiki, then uh, you put a number token down, or say, hey, you take a wound, or all kinds of various things that scenario up. Uh, same thing with the book. So. Let's see. Great. Well, that that's basically that. So then I'm gonna draw, I'll resolve it again. I'm doing this action here, so I'll go ahead and... Roll the dice. Yeah, well, now I got a different result here. So <clears throat> I succeeded. I take a wound because you know, I may have tripped on something and another adventure. So taking wounds, how does this work? On the explorer, I take a wound, flip it over one. Simple as that. Um, collector's edition, there's they have the triple layered uh, player board, so you'll be able to move them and you know they'll stay in there. 
sometimes you would you'd bump your board and like okay i don't remember how many wounds i had that, that's a nice little addition right uh I, I think I think I got the wood here. I got so it's just one wood, not two wood. Um, it would say two on there. So, um, do you resolve all discovery tokens immediately, or can you hold them and resolve later? So that depends on the token. So the ones I drew, um, those are, you just exchange them over immediately. Say, like here's an example. Goat found a random goat on, on the island. I guess the you know the go escape the Tyrannosaurus Rex in uh, Jurassic Park, right? So, for instance, this goat, um, I don't have to resolve it. So, in an example, if I have a weapon level of any kind, one or higher, I could send the goat to the farm and get a pelt and a and a, a food. Don't know how that works, but somehow the, the they give you there's a farm and you can also I name my goats Ignacy and Merrick. Um, and usually Ignacy doesn't usually last the whole game. So, uh, I mean, he goes to the farm. Yeah, the farm. And there's various other ones like, hey, you could use uh, this token later. But yeah, you can choose when you want to do them. Remember, you can't resolve them during the action phase. You have to resolve because you don't actually have them yet. Will there be cutouts for wounds? Yeah, so the triple layer player board, they're going to be... You know, there'll be the, the male side and the sheep below and then female side and I guess the cube just goes in. Pick it up to move it. Um, oh. I guess I should explain something. So even though there's a wood here, or any resources, I don't get I don't get resources on the tiles I I explore. You can only get them by gathering. The reason I got a wood there was from the discovery token. Um but now, in a future round, I can know I can spend actions to gather this wood. That's good. And what's the other? So I um, so I took the wound. I succeeded, and we'll see the adventure real quick. We'll go ahead and do. Look at this. Uh, I got another another treasure uh, thing here. So remains of a settlement deep in a forest. You discover a ruined settlement. Card this card, or draw through a mystery card. I want to resolve one one trap and treasure. So here's a good example. People like people are having questions on this in chat. So it's actually a pretty good card. Um, all right, let's go ahead and draw. I found a treasure. So uh, basically, this card tells you, hey, if, every, if uh, you can take one snow cloud and turn it into, basically, you have blankets. You're warm. Now. I can choose to stop and not draw any more cards. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because treasures are awesome and you um, not. And maybe we'll see a trap. Maybe I'll cheat and have a trap anyways. Just so you can see. Boxes. All right. This, this is actually another good one. This is actually like uh, amazing for me right now. This is a great first round. Boxes. Strong wooden box is very useful in your situation. Keep this card. From now on, your food does not perish during the night phase. I just found a bunch of food. This is like the best thing I could get. So this is looking, looking pretty good for, for me so far. Um, now, I don't technically have these cards, right? Because now they're technically in this box. This future resource. <clears throat> future resources box. Jeez, I need to drink some water. Um, yeah, sorry, let's do the, another tile. Another good example here. All right. So I see this one right. So it's a mountain. So I can take another one of these pieces here, and I'm gonna mark. Remember, the hatchet requires mountain. So now I can make I have a mountain. And over here, fire. And my knife. Let's go close here. So that requires a mountain. That requires a mountain. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, I can go back to here. I didn't actually say I was going to stop this. I'm not going to draw any more cards because I don't need to. I still have to shuffle this in the event. There's a, if you notice know, the bottom, there's a bottom port portion here. 
This is what I resolve when I see event if I eventually pull the card up out of the Right, so don't need these dice anymore. Those here. Finish talking about this. Remember, I don't get these resources, but I can gather them if I want. Um, in a future round. Uh, remember the Tiki in this case, this scenario does nothing, and yeah, I get a discovery token. One. Ah, yeah, perfect. This is a good example. So hey, this is kind of weird. This looks familiar, right? So let's go see what it does. So every scenario has these four special tokens. So we will. So, for instance, with this, I, I can get, I can use it to heal myself one wound. Um, uh, there you go. In this case, we found some oil, so maybe we can get our fire going. So I can spend this uh, and add two wood to my my uh, wood pile. So, for instance, if I had two wood here, I could throw that on the pile and complete that set. Um, I think you can throw this out of. There's a special rule with like when you're putting wood down, you can also use it to complete, maybe do another section. There's FAQ in the rulebook for that. I don't remember exactly because um, I always forget. Because you don't draw this token often. There's 16, 18 tokens in the bag. You might draw it one every so many games. <clears throat> okay, so we talked about that. That was fun. It's actually looking pretty good. I, I don't know what I did to the game. Maybe the game. I can actually pull up the rulebook real quick and we can look at the this is actually a good example. We should talk about this. So on the back of the rule book. Yeah, castaways. So every scenario in the rulebook has uh do you have in the base, at least in the corset, has FAQ. So for instance here, oil. Uh when traded, the wood must be used for the pile immediately. Okay, so if I use the token, I have to use it. I can't just like store it. Um this can be done outside of the normal opportunity to put wood on the pile. But if there are fewer spaces in the current column, then wood gain, the rest of the wood is discarded. So you should, should probably answer most of your questions from the back. That's pretty nice. Let's head on over back to this. Okay, get, get moving. So we've talked about that. We did our our explore expiration. So now we would right, so we're we're right here, right? So left to right. Now the last thing I have here would be um, who is this guy? Carpenter. Carpenter's taken the range camp action. So in a four player game, you actually put a special card here. So basically it does it has a slash. So I either get two determination tokens. In this case, three players or less. You get two determ two determination tokens and you increase them up. So now we have resolved all, um, we resolve all the actions uh, here. So now we can go. So what happens is the end of that phase, I would pull all the stuff. I can now actually own it. And now we go to the phase five, which is weather. This is where I roll the weather dice, but. Um, so sometimes you add tokens here from events and adventures. So like, hey, it'll be like, hey, you have a rain cloud coming. Um, and you have to resolve that. Um, I remember the scenario sheet here, we're not rolling dice until uh, at least round four. And then the last thing is the night phase. So we our little chart here. We resolve that. So the first thing you do would resolve, like, hey, um, Everyone needs to eat. So, friends, uh, in my case, I have a lot of extra food, so I can spend one food per person. Now, Friday, if you see, does require food. He has his own stash. He's just kind of, you know, hoarding it and not letting us know. Now, if I didn't have enough food for everybody, we'd have to decide who's going to starve. And that's really nasty, considering uh, if you starve, you take two wounds. See how much faster my health's going down if I don't get food? 
In my case, I'm probably not going to start because I have a bank of food. These will just go away. The next thing, uh, shelter. Um, so I can, before I, uh, during the night phase, before I, I, I calculate, you know, do I have a shelter or not, I can choose to move. So for instance, if this, if this was at a natural shelter, like a cave, I could move over here and, and avoid not having shelter. In this case, I don't have shelter. Uh, I'm going to take a wound. Uh, every, every, every person will take a wound besides, you know, I'm going to move over here because I can explore things easier and get, um, and get more access to And if you have a built camp and you have a roof and you have a palisade and you move, it's a bit harder of a decision because you actually you potentially uh, lose your roof and palisade um, parts of it anyway. Uh, I'll try and see if I can talk about that at some point before the end of the stream. All right, so that that is that's the first round. So I go back to the top here. I would move this over. Then you get second player. First player marker passes to your right. Um, if anything else, oh, if you had um, in the night phase, if you had any uh, food that with the bananas, they would expire. But in my case, I have the boxes, and remember, basically, that it indicates that all all bananas, which would expire, are now bread, which don't expire. So I could exchange these out if I wanted to. Um, not gonna bother. Um, so okay. So that that is our first round. So let's take let's field some questions here. If you have any questions, you now you get a flow of how the actions are taken and kind of how the how the I guess you haven't done the event deck yet, but how the adventures work, how you roll the dice, um, and and, and especially in this game, you um, you can't always spend two pawns on spot to guarantee things. Sometimes you really you really want to. <coughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot to move the marker, didn't I? Um, yeah, so I, I don't have shelter, right? So, yeah. Uh, the Explorer took a wound earlier from the exploration. I would take a wound for not having shelter. And Friday, he's in Friday, doesn't need shelter. Because, again, he has a stash, and he has apparently this big mansion and a tree. That... Okay, um... So the oil tech I don't have to have, to have to use right away. I can wait, right? Um, all, almost all the tokens are like that besides like the, the food token and the wood token. Um, <clears throat> and that's all explained in the rule book. So if you have any questions on that. Um, let's see here. And what it says when traded in, right? So in that case, I, I don't, I can choose when I want to trade it in. So, if you found a natural shelter and you got the mini game caves, does it stop stop the game until you solve the cave exploration? So I I don't I don't think I fully understand how that that problem works. I think it you have to take an actual action, an exploration action on the cave tile. I could be wrong. Um, that sounds like it would make sense to me, right? Like you're gonna go you're gonna go spelunking, right? We're gonna use the actual words here um, to go caving. Um, yeah, so that's my understanding. Uh, I've not played with it yet, so I I look forward to playing with it. So that should be fun when we do. Um, see what it's here. Will each scenario have an FAQ for the Book of Tales? Uh, I, I I I would think so. Um, because you know every scenario there's always questions that you can't you can put enough text on that on those sheets. I don't know where that thing is going to be. If it's going to be actually in the book itself, or it would be just on the website, print it out. Um, not sure on that one. All right, I missed you moving camp. Do you get penalized if you have no roof or palisade? No. Um, not at all. So, uh, and if I move camp and I had a palisade and a roof, basically how that would work is you reduce the roof level by half and round it up. 
So if at a, a level one, it would just be one and same thing for the palisade. But if it was level like uh, say two, over half it, get one. So when you get when you have a level two roof, you generally don't want to move unless you have to. There might be an event or an adventure that requires you to move, which is has happened before, and of course the weather happened and that wasn't nice. <clears throat> So what it is the oil token? The ruby, the oil token, basically just lets me. It's basically two free, free, two free wood to throw on the pile. So, and yeah, right. So I can't, I can't use it for anything else. I can't like use it to build shelter or anything. But now I can, you know, douse the uh, the wood and make and make a, a bigger torch so I can be seen. So I'm move on to the second round, and you'll start seeing some of the some of the changes. The first round I think is kind of more straightforward, and the second round then that decisions start having to come around. So then phase. First round. So now we can actually see what this looks like. You don't get a penalty for just moving the fire. Yeah. And I also forgot to include that. Uh. I don't know, God, I think it's kind of one of those things where, like, you don't, there's no, there's no text for it, so I guess you don't assume that. So, all right. Let's do this card. That's actually a good example here. Mist, go outside the camp and start to pray. So you have the book icon. So remember, certain scenarios require, when you see a book icon, you do something. So I would resolve that first. In this case, I'll have one. Um, and it says here, put a minus one worker in the exploration, export, export action. Do that. What what does this mean? So this token, and we've got some other ones. Here. Let's show an example. Whenever I the first whenever I do an explore action, the first action I take, uh, it's it's a, a minus one worker. So I couldn't do an exploration with this one worker. Now I have to do at least two, um, and I would need three workers to guarantee you not roll the dice. If I have multiple people to exploration act, because I picked what I would pick which one happens first. Um, if I if if I go down to zero pawns, then I can't take that. That one makes sense. And once you do that, the token goes off, and the rest of exploration actions are not a thing anymore. Sometimes I'll have to put on this token. What's that mean? That basically means you have an adventure no matter what. So you don't have to even roll the, the question mark die. I generally do it because you know you're supposed to roll three dice. But basically, you can only ever have one adventure ever, like per action. So I couldn't couldn't have two or three. Or hey, tropical penguin! Thanks for joining. Um, all right, so now I've got to get rid. Of, I've got to get rid of this card. Once you resolve it, it just goes away. So, it's in oblivion now. <laughs> All right. Now I see the bottom part of this card is searching for the old trail. So here indicates if I spin a, a worker here in the action phase, I can discard this card and get one determination. That's kind of a poor action, right? It, you want to, I mean, tokens are nice, but it doesn't really help you a whole lot. Here's the big thing. So I have another card here. I have this card here and I have another event card here. And I draw another event card another round. This bumps off. I suffer the bottom part. Which is generally really bad. Um, sometimes it's not bad depending on your situation, but for instance, this would make the the expiration, this, this thing happen again. And also I would have to put that token on there. That's that's not nice. Um, let's see here. That's my event. Uh, question, can you use Friday to get rid of a question? To Friday would get a hit though. Yeah, so you could you could take the expiration action with with uh, Friday, and say he's gonna do it first for the other expiration actions. In his case, he takes a win whenever you do the whenever there's an adventure. He just takes a win. So, and, and same thing happens if you roll the dice and you're exploring with Friday. So exploring Friday can be dangerous, right? Because you have the wound die, and you also have the adventure die. Now, you potentially get two wounds and basically almost kill Friday. He has, you know, four wounds. So you gotta be careful with the Friday strategy. Usually, like, you can take, uh, you might want to have him support a lot of the time, then maybe use him in situations where 
can't do enhanced supporting actions, but yeah. He has a stash of food and, and the shelter he's not telling you about, but you know, he, he needs some help, so he's there. Uh, all right, so in the event, all right, so now we'll go up here. Remember the morale phase? First player, look at that. I get one determination token. Here. And Carpenter. So Carpenter has three tokens. Um, let's see. Let's, let's talk about the abilities on his board. We haven't talked about those yet. So, for instance, the, um, I never remember the names on these, just the way the, the abilities work. So, for instance, here I can spend two, I can spend two determination tokens and, and spend one fewer wood to build something. So, if I acquired one wood, I could get it, for, I could build it for free. So, um, if I build, um, like a weapon, right? I would need one wood. I can spend that. Like, but I, I generally put two determination tokens off my pawn, and I'm gonna build with that. Um, that's kind of like my I would. Uh, or I could reroll a round die, any die I want. So that could be helpful if you're trying to succeed and you want to make sure you help help you out there. Um, Carpenter can, can can get some different ideas uh, and get more inventions on the board uh, for you to event. Um, or this one, Handyman is nice. You can spend three tokens. You can get like a a temporary brown pawn, and that allows you to um, you can put it with you when you're building to help you succeed. Um, to do stuff like that. So now all these abilities, so everyone has four abilities, um, and all require determination tokens. You can only use each 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 ability once per round. Um, let's see here. Get that. Covers that pretty well. Uh, go down to the production. Remember, I'm here now. I get a parrot and I get a wood. If I was here, I'd only get a wood. But generally, it's to your advantage to go to places where there are two two spots um, for production. So there won't be two food in one spot. It'll, always, it'll just be like a parrot or wood or wood, um, fish. You know, there's not um, usually just like, there's minimum one in max. Usually, it doesn't matter if it's a fish or, or a parrot. But there are events um, in the game, adventures that can make those resources go away. Or there's like a, a cage you can you go you go get a parrot and you can put it in the cage and then you you basically breed the parrots to eat them. But um, no, they go to the farm. Right, you don't, you don't all eat them. <laughs> but basically, you, you would, you know, you, certain resources can expire based on the type. Mm. Well, let's do that. Remember, production always goes into the available. Now, I got a pretty good stash of stuff here. I'm gonna the carpenter's gonna build some stuff this time. Well, so uh, this is this is a good one here. So. Top my event deck here, right? Again, next round, I'm going to draw an event. If I didn't put any new events in the, into this deck, into shuffle, I'm going to draw this one. We have a pretty good idea what this event is. I don't remember exactly, but I know it's probably not good. So, um, something to keep in mind. So maybe you might want to take an adventure at some point. Just, uh, or at least take an action so you have to roll the dice to maybe get an adventure so you can shuffle your deck. Because maybe you know this like this card is terrible and it'll kill you, like unless you can somehow change that. That not very hasn't happened very often, but I have I have seen that in a case where we've done that. And if you talk about shuffling this deck, um what I would do is just have someone shuffle the cards underneath the table or something and tell you tell you to stop. Someone will tell you to stop. Um otherwise I don't feel like you're cheating or not. I wouldn't do sleeves, um, because they're different backs and you want to know what the backs are um heads up so sometimes there are events in the mystery deck so it's not just adventures as well we talk about that so let's do our actions so uh I, I see a lot of um wood here so let's let's build some stuff that's fun new action shuffle the event deck yeah kind of yeah <laughs> Uh, all right, so what 
let's talk about the hatchet. This is actually a pretty important item to build if you can. The hatchet. This this goes on. They'll say put this plus one token on your camp tile. That'll help me help, help me generate wood for the rest of the game. And, and if you know, uh, you know, we we're in the game for what twelve rounds. So if I can produce it, I can make a hatchet really early on. And I get the benefit of the game for the rest of the game. So that's always a good thing. So I'll spend a pawn there. And that's so important to me that I want to guarantee it. So I could send my another pawn, or I could have the explorer come help me and put a pawn on top. This is this is kind of important, right? So the top pawn is your leading pawn. The bottom pawn, and I need, you can do an action that involves multiple pawns, like five pawns, three pawns. The ones below are supporting. Uh, they don't do. They have no. Um, they have no effect on the action you're taking. Just the top pawn. So then, in the collector's edition, right, you're going to have miniatures. So the, the the leading miniature will have this uh, thing you put under the base, a different colored ring. I, I have not seen them, but I, you know, that's pretty common. In a lot of miniature games now to have underneath, and that pawn will be the leading pawn. What's well, uh, one thing? Remember, we have these, you know, these abilities. Um, hammer and nails I could use, so I could use that to get a brown pawn. And basically, that is just an extra. It's an extra temporary worker that can't do an action on, by itself, but I can take it as like a temporary backup. Like it, it's going to support me. Um, and usually something to help, it's usually like a tool or like a candle to help you see better, you know, some kind of thematic item to help you do something like that. So, do on guarantee it, and I'll send my carpenter because I want to be thematic. Right, so, I have to get rid of one of these tokens. Right? This way. What's the next thing I want to do? <clears throat> I have I have plenty of food, so I don't have to worry about that. Remember, one food per per player, not uh, per character, not uh, Friday. Uh, a shelter will be really nice. I, I don't know if it'll be a shelter nearby for me, so I'm actually going to send my other pawn here. And let's show how the ability works. I have I have three, right? So I could spend these three, and I could get an additional pawn for building an a, a boat action. I could also use a hammer and nails again if I wanted to, but this is to show you how this works. I think the rulebook says you just go ahead and you put a black token on the ability that you used it. I don't. I just remember it. If the tokens go away. I spent them, and it says I get an additional pawn. So, and I believe it says I can only do it for buildings. Let's double check. Discard three tokens to get an additional pawn for one building action. It doesn't matter what pawn you pick. Hatch it doesn't it doesn't need wood. You're correct, it doesn't need wood. So um right, the wood here. So the way why you way I do this and why I think they're saying the rule book is you take the take the resource you put it on top, you know it's being spent. So over here I'm building the camp, right? And two players, I can spend two wood or I could use a pelt. I think we're gonna have this nice uh lion skinned uh camp. I think it'll be it'd be really nice. So and I can see now technically I have seven pawns right now because I, I I got two more building pawns. That's a pretty good start. So now I'm gonna guarantee uh I'm gonna have a shelter, right? Really important because now the rest of the game I'm not gonna take wounds for having issues of shelter. Um, so that's so five 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 rounds. That's five less five less wounds I take. Really important uh, first thing to build. If you... Might be even the, might be the most important thing for you to build for especially this scenario because you know weather's coming eventually and you have to have a roof. And if you don't have a shelter or at least a, a way to have shelter on the board here by a a cave or something. Then you're going to be sort of being pounded by the rain and the snow eventually. 
That looks good. And I'll fry a range camp again. And then maybe I'll go farm. What happened down here? I don't need to hunt because I have uh, plenty of food. I won't soon. I could maybe do an invention here. Here, what I do here? Turn the token on the map top. I don't know. Um, move on here. So let's see here. This pick could be kind of nice, right? So I don't have the shovel yet, but the shovel is important for some events. And getting this pick could be kind of nice. So let's, let's talk about this quickly. This basically means half the time during the production phase, I would get plus two. I roll the wound die, which is 50 50. Wound. Um, then I uh, get to food. Well, if I have a way to store it, then uh, if I have excess food, I could just live off that. Um, let's go build the shovel and Question, with a natural shelter like in a cave, why do you need a roof or palace it against the weather? It doesn't have that natural... So a base on natural shelter bit is just the shelter. You don't get any of the other stuff. You have to build upon that. So you can think maybe like your shelter is like a cave, but maybe it has a lot of holes in it. And you have to build a roof on it and maybe or on the entrance. These don't come in. So I'm going to build a shelter this round. But I don't, I don't flip this token yet because I don't actually have a shelter. I think that's what people are referring to. It's just a big X. Big X. Um, and if I had the miniature and I build, I'm going to take this big shelter and pop it down, right? And then wish I could show you that. And so, an example. So I can't do the rope. I like to build the rope, but I, I don't have that train type available. So go ahead and I'll just take it with me and we'll go exploring right there. Now remember, minus one pawn. So I can just remember that by putting that there, and it's not going to be a guaranteed explorer. So I have to use physics. This is going to indicate that I have to. Um, this is probably not the rule book to say do this, but um, I like to do things that make sense to me. Um, so I recommend some of these um, ways to remember things. Because if you're playing by yourself, especially, it's really easy to forget. If you're thinking ahead, like two rounds ahead, I'm going to do this. And it's a lot easier when you have multiple people because one person can handle like the production because they're closer to the side of the board. One person can do the events. Or Set the time token discard after a success. So this minus one worker token will discard um, the, the, after the first uh, action taken. So let's go. Resolve this. This is a little more complicated, right? So here on the left we have building, but really that's not we don't resolve building of inventions until later, right? Um so obviously I'm not doing the threat track, the event the events that come down. I'm not hunting, now I can do building. So I can choose to do this build action first, this one, or this one. And whatever order you want it to be. The order might matter depending on your situation. But We'll make it easy here and get rid of the wood. And here. That was my explorer, I believe. Right? No, it was the carpenter. Carpenter. And this one goes away. I built a hatchet. Obviously, I can't flip over the card. Um, so I just used my token right there. Remember it. So the plus one wood token. The put on our camp. Check. Now, during the production phase, I'm going to get an additional wood. So here, I would get wood one here, plus an additional one. Now, let's say I'm going to camp tile without wood. The hatchet does nothing, because there's no wood for me to gather. 
And I can't have multiple plus one wood tokens. I can't have like plus three somehow. Um, but I can have additional plus one food as well here. And this comes, and the hatchet comes with you when you when you move camp, right? That comes with you. Same thing with the other tokens. Um, start if if. Yes, uh, the tokens. So there's a big thing in the rule book uh, about the tokens. Um, depending on where they're at, um, like the minus one worker, um, if it's on the, like, the action on like, the cards here, they get a card after the first use. But if they're on the tiles here, that's like permanent, right? So sometimes they'll be, hey, there's a disaster here. Okay, well, anytime you do an action in this spot, it's an additional work uh, minimum. They're, they're a little kind of tricky to think, figure out, but I think if you if you read that in the rulebook, it's, it's, I think it's pretty clear. Um, question, if you move the camp, does the plus one wood come, for, come with you? Yep, it sure does. Because remember, you have a hatchet, and thematically, you're not going to like throw the hatchet down, like, we'll, we'll make another one. Like, no, you're bringing it with you. So, uh, so we did that build action, and we can go over here and bid our shelter. This goes away. I feel so dirty just throwing all these resources around. I don't have like a clean, but I'm just throwing them around because I'm not worried about being organized. But if I was actually playing a table, I would I feel like I'd be a lot more about that. <laughs> Maybe I'm triggering people and, and being super disorganized and messy. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, so I built that. All right, so I usually put a token here, remember that. And now I come down here, I put this token. Or if you have the shelter, I think there's like a base to it. And you just say, oh, I have I have that. Um, if you have the giant miniature, which I hope everyone gets that. Question, the five adventure cards that are not standard in every game, can I choose what five cards those are or do I pick them random? But the question, so the way those work, so see these little arrows on these cards? These are the ones that are in every game. Unless the scenario says otherwise. Um, so that's usually that's the first one you put down. And then the other five. The way it works is you take all of this you take all the inventions that are left. So even ones other characters have. You pick your characters, like the carpenter and explorer. I keep the other inventions out. And then I put the other ones in and I shuffle them up and draw five. It's random. And that'll I mean you could choose, I guess, pick which ones you thought would be kind of maybe be more important for a scenario if you're having problems with the scenario. I always randomize it. Um, but that, that's what the rules say, so... There are ways to get more inventions in here, like a, a Carpenter's ability. Um, and then there's also um, events and adventures. There are also some events and adventures that take them away. Or undo your progress. Like, oh, hey, you have the shovel belt. Now it's like, oh, you have to flip one of your inventions the other side up. You might lose your shovel. Um, and I had, we had a game on Wednesday we were playing, if you haven't watched that on our, uh, what was it, YouTube, on, on YouTube we have the Portal Games gameplays, where we had a shovel, and then we, um, part of the scenario we had to flip the shovel back over, and we didn't have a beach in that scenario, it didn't exist, we could never build a shovel again, like, there are situations that, that, can, that can happen. Can I discard, for example, food from... Future a place, or do they need to be in available? Now it's good. No, Victor, this is, this is this is where you ask questions. Um. Yeah, no, you can't. You don't actually have them, right? Like when you're resolving the action, you don't have them yet because you're doing all the actions at the same time. So you you all decided to break up and do your own thing. Like two o'clock, we're all going out to do this. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do this. You know, I found food. Well, Jimmy over there is not gonna be able to get the food. Um. No, there's no DoorDash here or anything, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry, Kamarowski. I uh, I know it's kind of late. I try to pick a time so the European people could could watch, and people in the U.S. and and, and people on the West Coast. And I also work during the week, so I have a normal job, right? So. You can always watch it after the after the stream's over too, right? It'll be on YouTube for forever, I guess. <clears throat> all right, so I resolve all those actions. Now let's go 
the shovel. So remember, I have to roll the dice. I'm only using one pawn. And I just roll these. Alright, well that's actually successful. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and show you what would happen if I didn't roll success. Because I'm probably not going to play this whole scenario because it's, it's going to take a while. And I, yeah, we're, we're reverse cheating because I'm actually going to fail it on purpose. Okay, come on. Finally. All right. We have not seen, you know, so every, I, all the dice have a blank result, so obviously they mean nothing. But what's this? Can I show this? No. All right, the plus, the two plus assignments. So that's, those are determination took. So basically you, you failed in your, your attempt. So on this side, it's either a success or it's a failure, a failure and you get, you get, like, you, you got like a, like a near, near success, right? So you, you're determined to do better next time. So you get these two determination tokens. So you get two determination tokens. But I would also get a wound. I cut myself trying to make a shovel. Kidding, right? I wasn't sex. I wasn't very successful. Um, then we do gathering actions, which I'm not doing, and then we'll do exp exploring. The token here, that um, minus one worker. So even though this is two, I still have to roll the dice. All right, so I succeeded there. So there we go. Um, Venture. Now, um, what I didn't say is that you could you can choose to I you can choose to do these dice in any order. So I could do the the reveal the tile and get the determination, get the whatever involves there, and then I could do the adventure. Most of the time, I don't think it matters, but sometimes it might. Your situation. Um, so it's vipers. As you take your next step, you get bitten by a viper. Of course, it's the island, right? This is a good example of how these work. And of course, I bit my head, so ow. And the location does matter. So I take the corresponding token and I put it on my head. Uh, and th this is because there are other events, uh, uh, other adventures uh, of different colors, all right, the three different colors that could happen to me. So I might have, I could potentially have two green wounds on different parts of my body. And that's how I differentiate the, the card here. My friends is here at some point when this comes back around, because it can go in the event deck, I could suffer negative effects. Uh, and depending who you are, you might you might choose to read the bottom or not. Um, we'll, we'll show here, if I don't have a cure when this card comes back out, then I'm going to suffer some negative effect. And the cure is an item I can make, an event. Remember, this gets shuffled from the event deck. Now look. I have successfully shuffled the come on, trying to come on tabletopia. There we go. Shuffle twice. So I've kind of got rid of that uh, exploration of adventure on top. Nice little hack there. So Friday comes back. Thank you, Friday, for your help. And we'll review another time. All right, so the river, right, remember? We'll go over to the dimensions over here. And remember the dam? So now we can build the dam. And map. So oh, talk about the dam real quick. So basically it just gives you two food. Uh two bread so they don't expire. Um fun fact, there are some of the things that require you to flip cards back over the dimension cards, right? In this case, you would have to pay back the food. If you don't have it, I found this out last night, I usually, I, I must be playing a harder situation. You, you give back what you can, and if you can't, you give back anything, or you partially can, you, you give out as much as you can, and then nothing else happens. If I have one food, I would have to give a food back to the game, discard it, and then um, <clears throat> I'd be fine. It's, when I was playing, I was playing where if I didn't have the resources, then I would take I would take wounds um, because of the unfulfilled demand. Probably 
Sorry, my luck in this game. I'm gonna have example, a good example of that. So we'll we'll talk about that for the end. Uh, and the map. So remember the map here. This basically gives me an extra green pawn. Like I just have an additional pawn. It's kind of like a you know, family growth action, right? So in, in Agricola, you have an extra worker. Uh, this worker special, where it, it has to go with somebody. Like somehow you have a crude map of the island, and now you can work more efficiently. An additional pawn. Oh, and uh, here's the cure I was talking about. So I could build this, but remember, I haven't found the planes. So I can't, I can't do this action. Um, and if you were watching the stream last Saturday, you noticed that I couldn't build the rope for the longest time because I didn't find the planes. I kept on spending all these actions exploring, um, but I just couldn't, I couldn't get it. Um, and so I get delayed when I could build the, build the rope, which then delayed everything else. I couldn't build it in the that was the pearl diving scenario. I, I recommend that. That's that's a fun one. Uh, question: If you got the map, you got an extra person for the rest of the game for exploring. Yes, it, but it's only meant for exploring. So, uh, it's not just one time. It is permanent, right? So you have a, a good, you have a rough rough map of the island, right? So you wouldn't just use it once and tear it up. I mean. I'm sure the paper industry would love that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I probably need to build a fire at some point, but I don't, I don't have to just yet. There's no, uh, no need for that. Might be a scenario where you have to need the fire right away. We did that. We did all of the all of the actions. Any resource I gathered during that would come down, which I didn't gather any resource. Um, so don't pull them down. And then we'll go to weather. Remember the weather here. We haven't we have not rolled the dice yet, and we don't have any weather tokens down here. Those tokens, like uh, which revealed uh, revealed today for stretch goal, right? Or you know these tokens, All right? So this is a storm. This is reduce your palisade by one. Um, this is the cloud, which we'll get to eventually. And the snow cloud. So those are actually revealed. They, they're adding like a, an extra. Uh, Cardboard put there, so then it tells you the rules. Hey, if you have a rain cloud, then you suffer these effects, which is nice because after you haven't played the game in a while, you forget how many resources. Go. The question: Do you replace the inventions as you build them, or you just have to set a number of inventions each game? You have a set number. It's it's the nine I believe it's the nine star was see one two three four five six seven eight nine plus five random ones from the deck. Oh, we haven't talked about yeah. So I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Go back here. I still get the beast right. I read, I, this is why it's hard to stream this and talk about it. Um, but thank, thanks for catching. So remember the beast. Now the beast is out of the deck here. And we don't get anything for the fish, but I get the three discovery tokens. One, so let's grab these. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, large leaves. So, this base it will cancel out a rain cloud. Pretty nice. So, if I ever have my first rain cloud, I can say, you know, I'm just going to use this. So I'm not going to worry about rain. Uh, healing herbs. So when I have the pot, that's an invention I can create. When I have the pot, then I can I can automatically get the cure for free. Not bad. Considering I've been bitten on the head by a viper, it'd be nice to have the cure. And this is always fun one: treasure. So basically, I I can search the the uh, like the mystery deck and get one treasure. You have to shuffle the beast. Uh, I I believe you do, but I don't think it matters considering you're right. You're adding a card from a shuffle deck into another deck. It doesn't really matter, and you don't know what they are anyways. So if there's a certain scenario that maybe requires it, maybe I don't have to look that up in the rulebook. I I've, I've always just shuffle them up anyways. So let's get so I have the three discovery tokens, and I believe. Now we're good. 
other phase, remember nothing happened. Night phase. So I could choose to move my camp if I wanted. Um, but I think I'm pretty good where I'm at. So I won't, I won't, and if I did move, I wouldn't. Remember if I did this, then the next production phase, I wouldn't get wood. This one gave me extra wood because there's no wood on the tile. I'm just, I'm gonna stay put. <clears throat> Remember, I have to eat one food per, per character, so I have my two bananas. And at the end of the night phase, this banana would just, would just go away. But remember, I have boxes. This is probably not a very good example because you don't generally have this card, and there's how many? Tre there's like twenty some tre treasures. So is is it, um, you'll just see us like, wow, he's he's doing such a great job. He's so good at this game. It's like eh, just eh, a little lucky. Um, okay, so we talked about that and. Before the night phase uh, ends, so I can resolve these tokens if I want now. I just can't do them during the action phase. I'm going to resolve um, this one. All right, another treasure. This is a really abnormal get an instant number of treasures because sometimes you have a game where you draw none of them. We'll just go ahead and draw a treasure. Here, oh. I thought that was probably card of the deck. I'm messing up here. Right, so right here. Ropes. Rope. Ropes do. You can use them to reinforce your shelter. Another good one for this scenario. Um. Yeah. So basically, I can I can get a free palisade uh, or a free roof whenever I want. So, for instance, I could here right now. So let's go ahead and use the ropes, and I'll increase my roof by one. So whenever I have rain, whenever there's rain, I can discount some of the rain clouds. Before I go, a question: Do you prefer playing Robin's Cruise on tabletop simulator or the physical board? Uh, I would say the physical board game, just because you know if I'm playing the board game, I usually have people with me, and I mean. It's kind of more of like, hey, like I, I can play people with tabletop simulator online and stuff, and that's that's been nice through COVID. But like, I'd rather play with someone, people there, and we can kind of make an evening of it, and maybe have dinner, have snacks, you know, some drinks, have a good time. So I, I would prefer the board game. So I mean, I know it's on game, my game found project right now, and it's gonna be pretty sweet having that, having that in those miniatures and having like the big, big um, camp or anything like that. That'd be pretty sweet. So that's my opinion. We've done that. End of the round. Round three. Um, remember, first player marker moves up. To the next player, clockwise order. To your right, whatever, however you choose to do so. Uh, how you ever you say it, anyways. And I'm not forgetting anything. I always have to double check myself. Back. I had shelter and everyone ate food. We're good. And I put a plus one food token on a tile that doesn't have food on it. I mean, you can, but it won't do anything for you. So, like, if I had a, some ability to give me plus one food and I was here, there's no source to really like gather food from, so I wouldn't get a bonus on it. So it has to be at least one. That's why it's plus one. Also, could you have multiple plus one resource tokens on the same map tile? No, uh, you cannot, unless there's like a scenario that says you could. But for the most part, no, it's one token. And I think that goes for every other token, like the minus one worker token, that can only be, ever be one. There's also, um, like, the, some other tokens here, like, these make you reroll the dice, or, uh, like, on, on, a, on an action take, or, when you take an action on this tile, then you have to reroll your dice. Um, depends on where it's at. Uh, and the hungry beast, dangerous. I think it's dangerous or hungry. It's something like that. It's basically, if it's on a tile, then you have to have one attack to do an action there. Um, or beast you fight will have plus one at uh, attack. So which we can probably do here a little bit. We're about, we're about an hour and a half in. So let's see. 
double checks. All right, so I'm looking up here is uh, building the wood pile. You can only put wood on the pile before the action phase of each round, with the exception of the mast and the oil. That's what, I'm, that's what I forgot. So normally you can only put wood when you, like right for the action phase. So you have to kind of plan out where you're going. The oil on the mast, the mast is something you can build. Basically you can turn your wood and your pellet into three wood. They can go on out of order, right? So like, obviously I can't build it and then I can't build the mass and, and do it in the action phase. I have to do it when I do it, when I basically build it. Hmm. Now I'm on to round three. Looking, looking pretty good so far. Um, do you have any, any quick questions about, um, I'll try to do another couple rounds maybe. And I might, um, to certain spots, I mean, I would do like the round. I'll start around. I'll be in round six for some reason. Just to show you how the the weather works. Um, if we were sitting down doing this, I probably wouldn't talk as much, and we would just get it done in a couple hours, maybe three in your first game. But obviously, with this, it's a little more difficult. Just medium. So. Then I'll try to um. Poop up a bunch of things together, so like, hey, these are some things you can easily forget, or this is what you see on another scenario sheet, so I can use my, my green screen for that. Okay, so let's do round three. And we'll do the, we'll do the next event. Night attack. A dreadful roar wakes you up. All right, so you see this token here, right? This indicates you put that big green question mark on the adventure deck. If it was a brown, it'd be this deck uh, for the brown token. Uh, same thing for the gray deck, the Catherine. Each player gets uh, takes a wound, and if possible, look at the top card of the hunting deck. So I guess here that's actually where it matters. We're talking about this. You have to stuff with. Everyone takes a wound. Something attacked us, but we have kind of idea what it was. You know, we're gonna be able to. Top this card is. I think it's a good example for combat. So what's what's. I haven't done it yet, so we'll... right, so we've had a tiger. This is this is pretty rough. So for instance, let's say I had three attack as an example. If I go and do a hunting action here, or there's an event that makes you fight something, because there'll be sometimes an adventure say hey, you have to fight a beast at level the strength three or something. You always automatically beat the beast. No matter what, you can go out there and punching it to death. You'll 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 beat it. You might you bruise pretty bad. If I have three attack, and they have, and the, my the tiger has six attack. I take the difference, so I have you know, six minus three. So I would take three wounds immediately. And then my weapon would be reduced by two. So in my example, I had three attacks. Now I'd, I'd only have a weapon of a, a level one. Now, not really good. If I had a weapon level of say zero or one, then I would have a negative value. Right? I couldn't. Um, repay that. Uh, I couldn't discard. I couldn't reduce my level enough to pay that. So for every level, I, uh, every level I can't pay, everyone takes a wound. Um, and and that's and then um, well, I spoke there. So it'd be the the person taking the action would take additional wounds. If this, if there was an attack during say the weather phase, um, this is this is an important distinction. Um, the unfulfilled demand rule. Um, like in the weather phase, or, or if I'm being attacked by a beast, I don't have, then everyone would take the wounds. Here I get five food though. It's, it's going to expire then the night unless you have, you know, the box like I do right now. And then of course the two pelts. Question: If you use a gun two times, do you still get wounds of the minus two attack? Yes. So if I have the gun, which I do here, I could use it twice to get six attack, right? 
So for instance, in my case, I have zero attack right now. And if I went attacking for some, went hunting a beast, I wouldn't recommend that. I could use two charges of this and give myself six attack. That's temporary. So and minus two attack doesn't doesn't affect temporary values. It affects the permanent value I have. But I could I I can use the pistol in response to uh, an action like. That. Um, and if you're the soldier, the soldier has an ability that does the same thing. Um, let's see. But normally you'd want to build your weapon up like a couple levels before you attack things. So, uh, and that's so I, now I know what's on top of the deck here. Of course, when I add another card, I'm gonna shuffle it. So there we go. That's kind of a cool event. And if you look at this, the threat. Um. I can I can resolve this if I draw the top card. Uh, if I do, I draw the top card from the hunter deck, hunting deck. Do not fight the beast, but resolve all other effects on the card. That's basically like a free kill. I I can like I sneak up on it. I know where it's hiding, and I can get the pelt uh, and the food from it. So that I I basically tricked it. Of course, I need three attack. Um, and if I don't the, the three here at the a pawn and three attack. If I just have you're not expending your three attack. You're just having like the requisite. Hey, you have to have at least three attack. Um, so, that's a possibility. Um, and of course if it falls off the track, then the beast goes away. Maybe it was something really sweet I wanted to kill, but then if I didn't have time, this will pop off. Talk about that. Remember, first player here is the Explorer. So I will get one Determination token. You play in a uh, a four player game. This turn, this this the morale track will go down a lot more because people are people are getting hurt more, and it, you'll have to spend a lot of time trying to build up your determination. A smaller game does not affect you as much. Yeah, Victor. I think I I I'm, I have to go look up some rules. I'm pretty sure you could use uh, the gun in this case. Get your attack up to three. Uh, that's definitely noted in the rulebook. I. I read over real quickly. I know I remember reading about that. That's covered. <clears throat> uh, that the production member. So I have a parrot. There's the food, and because I have a wood here and I have a hatchet, two food, two wood. Looking pretty good. I got all this wood. All right. So now we're gonna do some of the scenario shit here. Right, so remember it said I, I can only put wood on here at the beginning of the of the action round. So I'll take a wood, pop it on here. One. I couldn't put extra wood here, right? But um, let's see, I guess we can read this real quick. The pile must be completed in stages from left to right. And place any amount, any amount of wood on the pile in a round. First time one, two. So. I couldn't I couldn't use the oil to put two wood here. That can only do one round per time. Um so but maybe like in the next round I'm gonna knock up any wood on there at all. I'll put two on there. Maybe the next the third round I'll put in one wood and then two for my oil. And maybe in the next round I I, uh, I build the mast and get three wood, you know, down them down here. I can only do it once. Unless the card says otherwise, or it could be like, hey, you can do this multiple times. I'm not gonna plan that out, so I have extra wood, might as well use it. Question, don't you need a player to build the wood pile or just place wood? That's a good question. So, you would think that, but remember this, this, the sheet here says building the wood pile. It doesn't say using workers or actions. You just put the wood on there. It's kind of one of those like side things, maybe, you know, you're kind of view a thematic, like yeah, as you're doing a task, you just throw some wood on there as you walk by. So it doesn't really take that much effort. That's how I'm viewing it. Right. Uh, so let's talk about that. Action phase. I should put a wood on the fire. Um, and let's start putting bonds down. Let's put a pawn here and get rid of this card. So I'll show that as an example. And I'll have Friday do that.
And they build the fire. All right, because I need that for prerequisite. But I don't need it right away, right? I don't need to get a palisade for that. Make a deal. Uh, I'd like to get the medicine. But remember, if I build the pot, then I have the medicine here. So, that. And I'll send the carpenter. Uh, these are probably not the optimal moves. So I'm just going to make try and make sure I show you as many things as I can. You can, you can watch this video later if you're having issues and, you know, hey, you did this at this point. Yeah, so building a fire is not an action. That's up. Um, you don't need to take an action to win the game either. Once you have fire built, you have the last piece of wood on there, you just win the game immediately. We'll, we'll go exploring down here and we'll guarantee it. It's the two pawns. I can have a supporting pawn. Do that. And. Uh, we'll show how this works. So. You know, um, let's get going to talk about here. So these inventions, you can have multiple, multiple, multiple different action leads. So I couldn't have like the, these two brokering, like you, st you can do two separate actions on things, but not on these. So like, for instance, I can't do two pawns here, but I can have them work together to make one thing. Like I can't just like, Hey, if you, if you fail, then I'll be able to build this or vice versa. But if I wanted to, I could maybe send, do the, have these two make two different weapons, right? Or I can do the same thing with Palisade. Um, or the roof, right? I can do two, I can do set multiple, I can do three, four, or five. Have, if you have enough pawns, you can do all those actions as long as they're separate. Some certain scenarios will require stuff like that. So I'll make the build a weapon there and I'll have the pot. The pot doesn't require any items, just you have the prerequisite. Uh, sure, I think that looks pretty good. Let's resolve our actions. So, Friday's doing this. So, by setting a pawn here, I get one one discovery to one termination token, um, and Friday gets it. So, if you know, we don't have to talk about Friday yet, but he has an ability. They discard two tokens to reroll any action die. That, that's pretty good. Getting him tokens is difficult because you don't have the tokens coming in from morale phase, but you can have him do other ta small tasks. You can get a reroll, and that might be a critical um, thing for you to do. So, if I do that, card goes away. Uh, we'll talk about the, this track here real quick. So in the next event phase, a card's going to come down from here and push this card over. Um... But notice, you know, if let's say I didn't do this and I did this card here instead, you know, this card is not going to come off the track because one's going to come and fill the spot, All right? So that's that's kind of a nice thing to know. It's like, you know, this is not really that really this is really difficult, and I can't do it yet. Maybe I don't have the shovel yet. I can just do events, uh, threats here, and get rid of them so that the other one doesn't pop off. So a little trick there. Talk about that and the hunting building. Let's, the carpenter's gonna build a pot, so let's roll the dice here. All right, so take a wound and do an adventure. You're working so hard that you're you get hungry. If possible, discard one food. Here's, here's another good example. But I can't discard from the future resources. So if somehow I gather resources before this, um, like if I, if I hunted right and I got five food, well, I don't technically have it yet. Um, so I have to get rid of one of these. You can choose to get rid of the bread or the, or the banana. Um, usually, pick the banana because it does it expires. But and no, so this one doesn't actually go into the into the. Event deck. Not all of them go in the event deck. So we have this cool drawing of a hut. Right. 
that's that card. And that was Carpenter, so I did the pot, right? Flip it over. Make it out of the pot now. And then usually, you know, sometimes I'll say stuff like, hey, okay. So for instance, here in the night phase, I could spend an extra food. Like, I, like, you know, have make a, an extra, like a dessert or something, or a snack, and I can get additional wound back. I can only do it once, and it has to happen during the night phase. So usually it's nice if you have excess food. Okay, well, I can get back a wound to somebody, other than having the food just go away. Another big thing about the pot is, is there's a few tokens in the bag to give you benefits, like here. I can't use it right now, but and when the action phase is over, I could spend this token and I can get the cure. And basically that involves me just flipping this over, even though I don't have the prerequisite. If I haven't found the planes yet. I can still flip this over. I will just do that, and there you go. Let's go. My, my building up here, remember I needed a wood to build it, and I put a wood on top of my pawn here, and I still have to roll the dice because I have only one pawn. All right, so I failed. Remember, uh, that means that the wood doesn't go away. I just move back my inventory. And I believe technically it would go up here because right up there was other events, other things happening. I don't technically have it yet. Because I can't spend it on, on other things. I'll have some look up the rule. Foster. Put my two tokens for that. Get those. I take a wound. We have my adventure already. Alright, cool. Alright, so if you have two food, I can eat twice at the same time, heal two food. Now, unfortunately, not. you can't be a glutton and eat all the food. Um, well, you can only use the pot once, right? So, for instance, each eat, each eat a food at the end of the night, night phase. And if you have the pot, then you can take an extra food that you have and eat additional food and basically heal one wound to somebody. Only once. There's not, you can use multiple times. Uh, question, if you use that token to get medicine, do you need to flip the pot back? Not yet, not available again? No, the pot is one time. Once you have it, you, know, you can clean it out with water or whatever, right? Like thematically, you would get out. Um, right, I didn't do the adventure, you're right, so let's, let's do another adventure. Without a good workshop, work is very dangerous. Put a reroll, put the reroll token, and the adventure marker for boat action. And nasty. I guess it's a good example here, right? So let's say I had another boat action I had to roll the dice with. Now that the tokens are on here, they don't affect the current actions right now. Because I've already planned them out, and they would, um, like if I had my own worker, it would, it would make my action valid. That would make no sense. So it's just the next time. And these won't go away until I take next voting action. So even if these, I don't take a voting action for five rounds, those tokens still stay on these decks. Uh, let see. If action fails, any assigned resources are not lost. They return to the available resources space. All right, yeah, so if I fail an action, they just go back and, into the over resources. I don't think it's going to matter most, most of the time, but that's the ruling. Um, Paul Grogan did a really good job, and he took the, if you see him, he's the editor of the rule book, uh, the 2016, I guess it's going to be the one in, in this, um, the collector's, collector's edition. He, like, went, there's a whole story of Ignacy posted, like him, like, Going over working gig and talking to Ignacy and getting all these different rulings and, and then sat down and made Ignacy make a final decision on some of these. So, um, there's rulings for, rulings for things in there. You have a question like, why would that ever be a factor? Because he probably looked through all of, through all the cards and made sure that anything he could think of made sense. And that's why Paul Grogan is awesome rule, rule book editor. Um, so I, I, so I, know, I, I, I recommend watching gaming rules. That, that's what it is. Um, he does some good stuff on his channel, like uh, life plays and like that. I he's, he's a cool guy. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so we're almost at two hours, so I'll try to finish this round out and then we'll go through some, some side scenario stuff and then we'll kind of call it. Uh, so, I'm not gathering. But we're doing exploration. Even though I have two pawns here, right? I still have to resolve this question mark. This question mark came up during the event, all right? So that, that was already there before we. Add and I'll throw the die. I have done. Yeah. The island is full of danger. Something bad is going to happen. There's something in the air. Put that question mark on the ex explore action space. Up on the event. Oh, it comes back. Oh, so much for getting rid of that, right? Right, and of course this goes back in the event. In here. Shuffle. Shuffle. Look, the adventure went away. Another hack there, right? But so I was exploring here, so I'll get another another one here. Found another river. I already found a river, so I don't have to mark any more uh inventions. Prerequisites. We already have already done that. Nice thing that they're next to each other, right? Um, uh, and then, of course, there's a discovery token and the tiki, right? So remember the tiki, uh, the book, you just, you, you just resolve what's on the sheet. In this case, they, they made the scenario, they decided to not worry about those. Um, but I get a discovery token. So let's go grab one. Ah, oh, it's a special one, right? So. Herbs, so I could just heal one wound. Um, remember, remember, I have to use it later. I don't te technically have it. Big, big thing to remember. And that's all the actions. And then this comes down. So I could spend this and heal. Uh, so, like, for instance, I could spend this token now. As long as it's not during the action phase, I can use it. There you go. Hmm. And that gives the pot, right? So that token uh, gets me the cure for free, even though I don't have the planes yet. So when that event comes out that requires an event or an event requires me to have the cure, I'm good. I ignore it. It'll tell you to ignore it. Uh, and we got some questions, so let me finish the round. So night phase, remember, nothing down here. Round three, we still don't have any weather. Uh, weather phase, night phase. I have to spend food. Uh, banana and my bread. And I could choose to move camp if I wanted to. Uh, so for instance, I could move down here. And because I have a camp, a shelter, I don't, have to, I don't take any wounds from sleeping outside and anything like that. So. Now, move that down. Or, you can kind of see like there is a basic just if you go by the phases it's usually it'll it'll make a lot more sense just keep track what phase you're in um it'll, and it uh there's actually a good player edge you can go to uh do i have one i got it out to kind of show i just didn't i kind of just forgot about it but there's one of these in in the in the game i believe so there you go i basically I memorized this point here's the rule book <clears throat> that's that's the end of this the other round third round now we're going to kind of be weird and do some weird stuff so first three rounds hopefully that gives you a good idea how to how to play um give you a rough um run through okay this is how you do these actually we have another done gather action um and some other things so i'm gonna do those now so we'll do like kind of like a mock a mock round and just do some weird stuff to show you the situation <clears throat> so questions here Remove, okay. Have you removed the Beagle card this time from the event deck? Yeah, that's so on Wednesday stream we were playing on Tabletop Simulator. It had Voyage of the Beagle cards in the event deck. When I drew one, I... What is this? I don't remember this because I haven't played Voyage of the Beagle in a while. Uh, let's see here. Can you use Friday to do a build action, get rid of the question mark, and the V in the exchange of getting a hit? Oh, um... Here. 
I, I think he still has to re-roll. Yeah, so he, yeah, so you you could do that. You could have a Friday take it, and he would take a wound from the question mark because he doesn't resolve eventually. The question mark, he would still have to re-roll the dice. Um, and if, but if you did two pawns, good question. I don't remember if that's the case or not. That's definitely probably in the rule book where if you do two pawns, you you might have to still roll the die. Right, because question. Remember, Voyage of the Equal has begun to be done for 2023. Might be earlier, Ruby, you never know. Um, 2022. I mean, obviously, it's kind of the back burner because you want, you want this, the collector's edition, to go well. Um, all right, and... and... The rope is definitely a prerequisite for a lot of things. So, for instance, like, if you have the, if you have the rope, I could have someone build the raft, and... The mast in the same round because you don't like you don't have one rope you kind of have the technology of a rope so you don't you don't just have one item you share the items and um okay so now we'll do some do some stuff here so let's say for instance I have no food and let's say well, I think we did the tack action right but we'll we'll go over it again quick so let's say I have three tack. And I'm gonna go hunting with two pawns. Remember, the top pawn is lead pawn. And so I would just resolve whenever I flip the top card. The tiger is a good example. Again, whenever I had three attack. Um, of course, I would take three wounds, the, the leading pawn. So the carpenter would take three wounds. Is it six minus three? Three left. Um, and then I, the weapon would be reduced by two. But I have one. Like I said, if, it was a if I went to negative number, I would take additional wounds based on the negative weapon level and set the weapon level to zero. Uh, I get five food and two pellets. Guys supporting me, they're fine. They're just like, they're like, yeah, you got this. Don't worry about it. They're behind a tree. You know, like you, like if there's a shark out there and you're both out there, the guy who runs faster, I guess that's the guy. <laughs> I swim faster. Sharks can't go on land. Um, and let's go, let's, we'll, we'll look at another example, right? So we're right here, might as well. Um, oh, I guess I could use my pistol, right? I could use the one-time use in the pistol, combine with my weapon, and have six attack. And I would take no wounds from the weapon, weapon differential. And, all right. Oh, found some goats. So... In the case here, basically the same thing. Sometimes you lose weapon, your weapon level, sometimes you don't. Sometimes there there might be like a bird. I think there's like a bird that gives you like no food at all. So it's not always the best. Um, it's kind of risky to go hunt, hunting for food unless you have a backup. Uh, there's no dice rolling. You, remember, you just you beat the animal no matter what. You just go out there and punch it to death if you have no weapon. Um, or you have this like, you know, rock. Like it's just, you know. And that's all attacking. So other some like uh, Mr. Tails or Cultists, you know, you can... Beat them no matter what, if you have, even if you have no weapon. We've talked about hunting. So let's, talk about, let's talk about gathering. We haven't done that yet. So, remember, like I said, you could not gather on the tile you have. So, this is the tile I'm at. I can't do gather action on the same tile that I am because I've already collected those resources. But I could go next door to get a fish here. So, I put my token on the fish. And then when I roll the um, dice, I, I can either roll the dice because I don't have one, I have one pawn, or two pawns, and I'll have to roll the dice. Gathering dice are generally the, the least painful. Um, you could also, if for instance, I could go gather wood here, and if, you know, I could gather in the same spot for different things. Uh, let's see. Any questions here? If Friday dies, you don't lose again. Yeah, if Friday dies, you just kind of move on, you know. Only when one player dies, the game is over. Or you, obviously you can't complete the game for some reason. Like, you don't have enough to, enough rounds to build the camp, campfire. Yeah, you have to do... Uh, if I if the dies rolled... 
Yeah. So yeah, the venture you don't have to roll you don't roll the die when you do adventures with the question mark on the decks. You just you don't have to you don't roll it. You just say cool. I'm gonna having a venture no matter what. You don't have multiple ventures. You just get um, one adventure. Uh, yes, Ruby, I like it. You have, you have two days and twenty hours and fifty four minutes and well, probably less than thirty seconds. At 50, yeah, to um, get on the game game found uh, pledge. Uh, game found uh, project, which will have a pledge manager. So, yeah, if you're not sure what you want, just pledge for something, and you'll be on the pledge manager, and you can add things, and you can change things. You can do different different levels. The only thing I can't do is if you put like you know fifty dollars in or a hundred dollars, and you can't go back, right? I'm, I'm sure you could probably ask for a refund for some reason if you had like some kind of hardship thing going on. I'm sure Ignacy would be cool with that, but don't take my word for that. But um, and Ignacio, he's going to try to get pictures of the playmat and other things, so you can make sure you're buying what you what you want to buy. Um, question: If you take a gather action on a tile with two resources, do you gather both of them? Well, you take a gather action like I'm showing here. I pick the resource I want to gather per pawn or per per action. So I could do two act two pawns here to gather one wood. I could do two pawns to gather one and one, but I can't gather the same resource twice. There's only one available. Here's something we haven't talked about. Let's say, man, I really want more wood, but my camp's not next to it. Like, I want to get this wood out here. How do I do that? Or the concept of, like, distance. This is more prevalent in First Martians if you ever play that. To most people watching this happen. I want, to, I want to gather this wood. I could spend one pawn to get it right, but it's too far away. So I just spend a pawn to get there. So how you represent that is by stacking a pawn. So now I have two pawns. But technically, right, I'm gathering next to my camp, two pawns is an automatic success. If I'm gathering up here, one away, um, not just in the camp, but one further away, I have to use a pawn to cover the distance. Technically, this I can do this action, but it's not a success, not an automatic success. I want to guarantee that I have to use an additional pawn, so three. Um, we could get crazy here, so my camp's up here. I want to get this fish all the way down here. Well, let's see here. One to gather the, the fish, one for distance, another one for distance, and then I could spend another pawn to guarantee it. You don't, you don't generally would do that, but let's say you're trying to explore a tile. Like you can do the same thing for exploring. Let's say I want to explore here. So one pawn to explore, one for the distance, maybe one more so I can succeed automatically or not. But there are certain actions that require you to do things a distance away. Uh, I think like a second year, second scenario, there's a cursed island where you're trying to build um, uh, crosses. You have to build. Them, you can't always build them on your camp. You have to build them further away. So we talked about gathering. We've talked about um, hunting. Let's talk about weather real quick. So let's say hey, we are now in round seven, and I'm gonna roll all these dice for the rest of the game. I usually put them in here so I remember. Um, so during the night phase, I would take these and I would just roll them, and those are my results. So, um, can I show that? Uh, so, for instance, there's two rain clouds and another rain cloud here. So I would sum up all the rain clouds. Um, but actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll sum up all the clouds in general. So uh, let's get a good example here. Uh, flip. Good example. All right. Get some. In this case, I have three clouds. One of which, I don't get this die yet, is a snow cloud. So a snow cloud basically means I have to spend one wood to heat my heat my heat my shelter heat where I'm living. I don't have that, then we all take a wound. Because this is in the weather phase, so we all, it's all part of our, um, our surviving. Not just individually, individually, right? So we'd all take a wound. Now I have three clouds. So I take all the, cl the rain clouds I have, all the clouds I have, and I look at this. Well, I, have a, I have a roof level of one. There's two more rain clouds than I have roof. That's bad, real bad. So for every one of the, every, every cloud I can't, cover of my roof 
I lose one wood and one food. In this case, if I had you know this in my resources, I would lose all four of these. Ouch! And that happens right for the night phase. So you could you could have all this excess food and then you lose it because you didn't have enough um, roof. Now, for instance, say, let's go to this again. Let's say I only had you know you know this. Well, I would get rid of all of them. You can't say, hey, I'm not going to get rid of resources and take the wins anyways. You lose everything you can lose. And because I have two resources I can't pay, every player takes two wounds. Fr Friday's good. He's, he's fine. Don't worry about Friday. So, yeah, weather can be really nasty. And then you have this red die, which is a little different. So, like this side is your palisade goes down by one. If you don't have a palisade, well, you all take a single wound. Um, roll, roll, roll. And there's a blank side. So hey, this is three attacks. So basically we're being attacked by animal of level three. So attack level three. If I have three attack or more, it doesn't matter, it's fine. If I have two, and we all take a wound. That's the difference, right? Or if I had no attack, we would take three wounds. Really nasty side if you don't have, you're not prepared. And then there is... Oh, just had it. No. All right, so... A banana. So I guess uh, I was you as a monkey came in your camp and stole food. Like, just stole a banana from you. So that could be nasty, right? Because if you don't have enough food and someone has to eat, minus two wounds. And, yeah. So, that's rough. That's why this scenario is hard, because these dice, you know, get pretty bad, because you have to roll them the rest of the game from six on. So your goal is to try to get a roof built by ground four, Maybe maybe get two, and then, yeah, you want to try to maybe get level three. Here, and have a lot of excess wood. But remember, you're also having to spend wood on the wood pile. And, of course, you're spending the wood in the action, before the action phase begins. So you're kind of gambling. Are we going to have enough wood to heat our house uh, are we, you know, before the snow clouds come? You know, that's, 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 that makes it a tough decision, right? And, of course, you only have so many wounds, and if one player dies, you're done. So you got to be very careful with how much wood you put on the wood pile. Um, okay, so we've talked about that, we've talked about all the actions here, about how you win. Oh, uh, whim, uh, yeah, no, the red dice, it, it's a banana, or, or it's any food you have. Um, they just put a, a banana because you would recognize it as food compared to anything else. Um, yeah, Ky Kyle, I, I I would agree. That getting your getting your roof up is really important. So you know weather's coming, and you didn't need you need to carry, carry, try to create an engine, get the hatchet built, you know, get your shelter up, and and basically just start gathering resources. Um, you gotta find a good spot on the map where you can go out and gather gather wood and uh, stuff like that. But here here's the one thing that kind of makes it rough, and if I can. I have a card for it. Here, we use the green screen. Mm. There's cards like this. That are nasty. So you take an adventure. You, know, you can put one pawn out and you go gather, right? And usually you're going to succeed because the dice are heavily favored for you succeeding. Um, but if you run a card like this, like, like this, um, it starts, the resource you're, you're gathering from now gets depleted. So now you might have to move your camp because all your wood is being depleted around your camp. You have to move somewhere else. Of course, the spot you're at might have been nice. Yeah, so you'd be... And I've, I've had games where like three or four of the spots around a camp went away, and we had such a hard time getting any resources until we moved to the other side of the island. That's a nasty one. There were quite a few of those in the deck. Uh, let's talk about this one. This one was an issue before lost so there are times in the in the game where like you're going exploring let's say i did my explore action now here and close here exploring and i draw this event card well i got lost and i can't come back to camp that night so what you do is any any, any resources anything you gather during this expiration you gotta keep off to the side that's like you say you gather some food or some wood technically it doesn't go in the future resource box it goes like next to it so that night 
if you have any food with you, you can eat it. Most likely you don't, and so you're going to take two wounds for being outside of camp, and you'll probably take a wound for not having shelter. But if your tile, um, I showed you that. There you go. I export this. Oh, this tile has a natural shelter. So if I was, if I somehow got, you know, I uh, had to execute the night phase outside of camp, I found a way to camp out uh, this cave or whatever, I wouldn't take the wounds. So there's a whole thing on this on, on the uh, on the rulebook. I, it, it's kind of thematic, right? You'd get lost, couldn't come back. Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, actually, we'll talk about this real quick. The morale, so you see a little arrow here. That means, you know, you came back, everyone's excited to see you, and the morale goes up. But there's also, like, say if you're taking wounds right, Say I took uh, enough wounds, or the arrow go the other way. When I, when I cross over this, uh, my morale goes down by one because I'm complaining. And here's where it gets even more painful. So let's say I heal it up somehow. So the morale track doesn't increase, but if I go back over the, the that way again, guess what? Yeah, it goes down again. So when you heal, you want to make sure you either heal when you're getting closer to the arrow, next arrow, or you get, I don't, I don't think there's a heal in this game that does it, but get enough healing to get you above that. We talk about that. Okay, question. Can you use the both the sack and the basket when gathering at the same time? Um, I don't think I've ever had that happen. Um, probably in the FAQ about that one, but... In, in theory, I know for sure you can do it. You can have someone explore up the bat, go gathering with the basket, and have another person going with the sack. And basically, you can get two resources per gather. And it might be kind of risky to send, uh, if you could, a basket and a sack together. Because if you fail that action, you know maybe you you don't get the three resources. You you get nothing. Um, so let's talk about personal inventions real quick. So, for instance, if I had a rope. I could take my pawn and I could say, I'm going to build my, I guess Carpenter's Black, right? I could build my snare. So basically I would flip this, to, remember it's plus one food here, so I flip, this is all my tiles. So I flip, I flip it over, if I successfully built it as an action, and then I would get two determination tokens because I succeeded in my brilliant, brilliant idea. So, and then of course, right, so that's how you get um, your plus one food token from my camp. Um, so for instance, the shortcut, similar idea, you build it, but in this case, the shortcut is kind of like, you know the area well enough that, that um, like for instance, my camp's here, like I can say, I, I know a shortcut over here, so during production phase, I can say, you get one chosen resource, so I can choose what resource I'm getting from this tile, but if I ever move camp, say I move over, like, here, my shortcut's not known anymore. I, I, I would have to, this flips back over, and I have to rebuild it. And if I rebuild it, I would get two more determination tokens. Um, talk about, let's talk about another scenario real quick. First island. So this is the second scenario. Um, I recommend if you're having a hard time playing Castaways. This one's a little easier in my opinion, but we'll show you how it's a little different. So obviously there's ten rounds, and the layout's kind of different. And your goal in this one is about five crosses. So basically you're kind of like exercising the doing the exorcism of the island, and so you see that you have different abilities, different cards you can build, and you can build them multiple times. You see on the left here, um, uh, the tiki's. So whenever you see a tiki on a tile, say for this one, let's say uh, yeah, this was the first one I explored, right? So I'd go ahead and I would take these number tokens, and I would put a, a one down, right? So then I look at the sheet here, uh, a pen or something, right? And I would resolve that. So in the future. In a future round, you can take an explore action 
So basically, this is like a temple I can go and visit. So sometimes it's just like, hey, something bad happens. So like, for instance, on the next TK I run into, the player who explored the tile gets the wounds. So, um, and then say, you know, it says three, four, you know, da, da. So eventually these are fog markers. So this one, this is what I want to talk about because people easily uh, mess this up, is um, whenever you see the book icon here, it's basically telling you to put fog tokens on the, on different island spaces or tiles. So if I haven't had a bunch of tiki's out, right, and I draw the third one um, here, um, I would put fog tokens on on two spots. So if, let's get my boards like this. This is island tiles or spaces. You know, so I could put a fog marker like here. It doesn't affect me. But if I had a fog, in this scenario, a fog marker's, uh, do I have any more? If I had it like here, then any actions I do on that tower are minus one workers. I would need additional workers to do something. And they'll stay on there permanently. Um, unless there's like an ability to take them off. So there's this... You know, sacred bell. So I could re I could build that multiple times to remove fog. And there's special abilities on here, special things you can build, uh, discover discovery tokens. But basically, that's kind of different scenarios work. Um, there are seven in the the second the uh, I forget what edition that is, 2016 edition. I don't recommend playing uh, Cannibal Island or. Uh, Family Robinson and I maybe even see Godzilla in your first couple tries. They're a bit from involved. Cannibal Island is really rough. The win rate on that's low. Um, and Swiss, this Swiss Family Robinson's a long one. So if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you might have a hard time trying to win that one because earlier actions are really important in that one. Oh, let's talk about the dog real quick. If you're having pro trouble playing the game, throw the dog in the game. So the dog just basically gives you part my green screen, right? I give you additional pawn to do the explore action or hunting action. You don't defeat it, it does its own thing. So you can change it, you up your difficulty based on how things are going. You know, when you play a solo game, you play with Friday and the dog. I generally play with just two pawns, uh, two characters, and use Friday. That's that seems more entertaining to me. Alright. Uh questions. Fog mark on the camp tile, does it affect gathering around? Uh, I don't believe so. Um there you go. If the camp is located on a tile with a fog marker, you get no resources from, resources from the tile during the production phase. Yeah, it's bad. Remember, you can put them on the spaces, not the tiles first. I played random. Plenty of people said they put it on the tile, and the scenario was almost impossible. Well, because it was, because you made it really difficult for yourself. Maybe you could do it if you just put it on the tiles. But. Um, okay, so I think that's... Unless there's anything else, I'm sure I probably forgot something important. Um... I feel like that covers a lot of things. Um, we talk about unfilled demands. That's a big one. Uh, talk about camping. We talk about. I think we've got pretty much everything. So, are there any questions about the tutorial here? Any, any kind of questions about the, the cam campaign? Like maybe answer. I I probably not the best person to talk about like what's in each pledge and everything like that. Um, I figured. Ignacy's team is going to handle all those questions, and I would probably make a mistake and feel bad. So, but gameplay wise, maybe like um, thoughts and scenarios. Um, do we have a gameplay for each scenario in, the, or in our channel? No, we, we don't currently yet. No. Um, we have the pearl diving, we did. Uh, I remember what was what got on there because we we just have on the main channel for a while and we moved it over and I don't know if everything transferred or not, but we have. I know we have at least two right now the, for the campaign. I probably have another one previously. Um, we do plan on doing more in the future. We also do we actually have a whole group right, so not just me. Um, but we have uh, Captain Link. He does Nurshim Hex. I should remember these times. I feel bad. Uh, it's like once once or twice a week in the middle of the middle of the. I think it's like noon or two eastern time and we have paul and david and they do stuff in the wednesday night evenings that's when we did that um we did um tomb raiders that's where it was uh pearl diving was last saturday 
Mm. I think we did Gen um, the Jenny one. Um, Jenny needs help at one point. We streamed that at one point. Um, I, I do want to stream as many of these as I can. I think it's fun and having a group and you know, it's one of those things where I, I want more people to play this game. So if they see more gameplay of it, maybe they'll get more comfortable. With it. That's, that's why I wanted to do this. I, I didn't have to do this. Nazi. I'd be more than happy if I didn't want to do this. But, you know, I, it's kind of almost self, self serving a little bit because if I teach people how to play it and, and more people buy the game, maybe we'll get more expansions and I can play it forever. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, we're already getting 50 more scenarios. Uh, it's cheap and unlocked. I, I don't know. Um, okay, will the companion app have questions and answers? Uh, that'd be a good question. Uh, back a queue in there, maybe. Um, that won't be hard to do, I don't think. Gameplay with Ignacy live stream. Well, he Ignacy has streamed with the Dice Tower a couple times, and they got demolished every time. Uh, and then I think they he played King Kong on a like Portal Con a while ago, and that didn't go so well for him either. So sometimes a designer isn't always the best player. <laughs> I, I've been trying to. I wanted to get Ignacy character, and I was kind of pushing that last stream. Obviously, it's not going to happen, but I think it'd be fun to have a character at least they can play one. Probably won't happen. But. All right, thank you, Ruby. The captain does his at uh, Tuesday at one thirty p.m. I I don't catch it because I'm working most of the time at uh, that time. But he plays Nirshima Hex, um, and David and Paul they they do Wednesday night. They'll do like a, a variety of streaming stuff. So they'll do. Fifty first day, the new um they've done alien artifacts at one point, they what else we do? Um oh Imperial Settlers, uh also Empires of the North. And sometimes we'll do like a variety of things. We'll go, hey, what's let's, let's play another game. So we played like Castle of the Tuscany once and we did Bonfire. So you know, we're not gonna do all portal games, but, you know, I mean it's for portal, so we did most of the games. Um but, you know, every once in a while, pull something out differently. And, uh, yeah, those, those, it's fun to try some stuff out and do that because I'm not like getting out and playing uh, games out right now because of COVID, but I can do stuff on Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator. Um, you know it's a great game when even the designer can't beat it. Yeah, that's, 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 that's true, right? I mean, <laughs> there's some truth to that. You make a game so hard that you even you have a problem beating it. Um... And of course, you know, they was the last time you play, you know, Ignacy played it consistently and other designers, right? Like you have other games. If you're Ignacy, you know, so you're running a company and you're designing. I don't know how he does it. He probably doesn't sleep. <laughs> but if you have any other questions, let me know because I'm probably in the stream here in a, in a couple of minutes, a few minutes. Um Question: What is the most way you you lost uh, lose the game? So lost the game. Oh man, uh, I, I, there there's an event. There's some events in the deck that can be surprising that can kind of just end you right away. Um, I did find a funny one. The last stream last Saturday, right? I did the pro diving and I couldn't find the planes. You know, no matter how much I explored, and then that just basically made me not not win the game because I couldn't fulfill. I couldn't. Like I had to build the net, and then I had to use the net to get pearls, and then I had to use the pearl. I used the pearls to build the necklace, and then another round to deliver the pearls necklace to the gods or whatever. So I had a hill, you know, I like a a point where I had to just say, okay, I'm gonna put all my pawns and draw as many pearls from the bag as I could, and of course I didn't get it. So it was kind of fun to put stuff from a bag. I always liked that, like. Those games escape me. Bag building games are always fun. I enjoy them a lot. Somehow, even though they're basically deck builders, I enjoy the bag building more. Go figure. Um, and, alright, well, I think that's pretty much it. So, if you have any more questions, um, the Game Pound Project, if you actually have a gameplay question, maybe you can you pound gameplay. Um, right here, I'll just put it in the chat here. And I can I can do a search on that in the game found uh, comment section, which is fantastic, by the way. I like all the positivity in there. Um, and I'll see if I can try to answer them, or at least someone. There's a bunch of Robinson Crusoe experts in there too, I'm sure. So, um, 
And if you don't know, I, I, I am uh, Dr. Robinson on the Game Found Project because uh, Paul called me that once, and I said, you know what, if I'm going to be a doctor in something, might as well be a board game, right? So, <laughs> so all right, I'll, I'm going to end it here, and um, check out the page if you haven't, and hopefully I didn't forget something important. If not, well, we'll try to cover it in the next update. Okay, so have a good one, and uh, have a great Saturday. And here out.